everybody, welcome back to Sticky Floor Friday, the internet movie show that's been pouring over the Star Wars Blu-ray box set. And I gotta say, these movies have never looked better, but the real gems are the deleted scenes. There are three highlights in particular. The first one is a bunch of scenes of Luke on Tatooine acting like a little bitch. He totally takes after his dad, and if you thought Anakin complained in the prequels, just wait until you see Luke in Tashi Station. Just like, nah, I wanna go fight, <laughs> Also, there's a hilarious Muppet Wampa attack on Hoth. I thought that was myth. I didn't know that that actually existed, but they shot it. It's pretty awesome. And finally, the biggest revelation, we get to meet <gasps> Padme's dad. How awesome is that? How many of you out there have been waiting to meet Padme's dad? It's... <sighs> anyway, you know, I, uh... Don't care that I spent money on this. It was totally worth it. It's great stuff. Now, let's talk a little bit about Drive. Now, Drive is a sneaky little movie. It presents itself in the trailers and in the first 10 minutes of the movie as a high-tension heist action movie. It stars Ryan Gosling as a Hollywood stuntman who moonlights as a driver who is very punctual. He only gives a five-minute time window, and if you're too early or you're too late, he's out of there. He also doesn't carry a gun. He basically just wants to stay out of trouble. So, as is always the case with drivers who want to stay out of trouble, gets himself into trouble. Sounds familiar, right? Sounds like every other movie with a getaway driver. But the thing that separates this from something like The Transporter is presentation. It's the way the movie is presented to you makes it feel so much deeper and it's because it's a really quiet movie. We have a mostly silent protagonist, which means we're afforded a lot of shots of him looking out windows, contemplating things, probably like, how do I get into Carrie Mulligan's pants? And uh, this has led a lot of people to believe that this is an existential art film with a European flair. Although I think the European flair is the 80s pop soundtrack and the totally rad pink cursive titles. I don't think it's an art house film, but it definitely has a deliberately slow pace. Now this may lead some people to call it boring, but I don't think it's boring. It's an action drama dressed up in some fresh paint, the same material that we've seen over and over, but it's actually done in a different way, which is what you want to see, isn't it? Now the driving force of Drive are the performances. There are a few standouts that are riveting, starting with Ryan Gosling, who plays the driver with a mix of quiet intensity and mystery. You don't know where he came from, you don't know what he's capable of, and you don't know what's sacred to him, which makes him completely unpredictable. And for anyone who wonders whether Ryan Gosling could pull off a badass, watch him kick a man's face in and then get back to me. Also of note is Albert Brooks, who again here is playing a character we've seen over and over again, a mob boss but he twists it just enough to give us a unique, fresh take on it, and he is so damn good, he can play sympathetic and sinister, sometimes at the same time. He values life, but he also knows when a life must be taken, and every time he's on screen, he just lights it up, and he's the perfect foil to Ryan Gosling. These two guys make this movie worth watching. Now finally, there's the action. The opening scene is a tightly wound pressure cooker that sets the stage for the rest of the film. And again, it's a fairly simple escape the cops situation, but it's just really, really clever. And I said this is a quiet movie, but it is punctuated by very loud acts of violence. It is surprising when it happens, and it ramps up as the movie goes along. At first you think, this movie's not interested in violence. It just wants to see Ryan Gosling drive around, looking out his window, listening to music, thinking of stuff. But oh no, this movie, just like the driver says to Albert Brooks, has dirty hands. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. My only complaint would be the last act, it does lose its cool a little bit, turns into more of a straight up vengeance movie, and you wish that the driver was as clever in the end as he was in the beginning, but it's not enough to kill the movie off. If you're gonna go see Drive, just know this. Be patient. This is a movie that takes its time. But when the action comes, it comes hard and it comes fast and it is well worth the wait. Yes, at times it's trying way too hard to be really cool, but most of the time it backs it up. All right, time for three questions. Number one, what are your thoughts on Drive? Number two, before Drive, would you have ever called Ryan Gosling a badass? And number three, what's your favorite movie featuring a guy driving a car? Any dreams you have or plans for your future, I think you're going to have to put that on hold. For the rest of your life, you're going to be looking over your shoulder.